So when Tesla announced that the first 4680 Model Y deliveries were starting today at Cyber Rodeo, they were technically just delivering to employees, not to real customers, you know, people that don't work at Tesla. So it took them about two months to finally do it, but we now have documented cases of the Giga Texas made structural battery pack Model Ys being delivered thanks to the YouTube channel Spoken Reviews, who I'll link down below if you want to dive more into the ownership experience of that 4680 Model Y. But in his videos, he kind of detailed and debunked a lot of theories and speculations surrounding this next generation Model Y, which the basic conclusion is that the 4680 Model Y provides a lot of advantages for Tesla, not so much for its customers. So for one, he showcased the charging statistics, in which case the vehicle software showcased that just like a 2170 Model Y, there is a charge limit for daily use and a charge limit for trips, which mainly debunks the very, very common theory I was still trying to explain to people was incorrect that Tesla was using lithium iron phosphate for this 279 mile range Model Y. Because of its inefficiency and because of its high weight, a lot of people were just convinced there's no way this is 4680, but the sales advisor literally told the customer that yes, this is using 4680, and I guess it wasn't enough that Elon himself and other people on Tesla earnings calls have said that while it's theoretically possible to do an LFP 4680, it doesn't really make sense to, and they're not doing any right now because of course lithium iron phosphate is lower energy density and cylindrical cells are not the best way to utilize space in a vehicle if you're trying to stuff in more batteries to hold a lower energy dense chemistry. So yes, that means the 4680s are still using a nickel based cathode. It's the same type of chemistry you would expect in a 2170 Model Y. And in his first supercharging session, we saw kind of an interesting charge curve. It wasn't particularly good, unfortunately. He basically was able to go from 10% to 80% within about 30 minutes, which is pretty standard. And while we didn't see some insane peak charging rates, it was the first time we saw a standard range Tesla go over 200 kilowatts. Even if it was very briefly, it's important to acknowledge that that didn't happen before previously, whether you were supercharging an LFP Model 3 or even before they made that switch and they were just using 2170 cells in the standard range option, the peak charge speed was usually around 175 kilowatts. So now to see that go over 200 shows that there may be some room for improvement and I speculate there likely will be a software update in the future that improves the supercharging curve of the 4680 Model Y and maybe it's just not ready yet. But he did confirm a few more differences for us which is that the Texas made Model Ys come with a parcel shelf on the back which he was very happy about and provides a little bit more practicality and storage behind the hatch and he was overall very impressed with the build quality and the panel gaps being pretty symmetrical and the paint quality looked nice, which kind of reaffirms a lot of people's belief that Tesla does not have a quality control problem, they just have a Fremont problem where that dated factory and its kind of bizarre layout results in quality control being overall worse. Hopefully this means better quality control moving forward with Giga Texas as well. And his sales advisor had told him that they had already delivered four or five other Texas-made Model Y. So he was not the very, very first customer delivery, but still within the first 10, which is a pretty impressive milestone and I think it also says a lot about how Tesla prioritizes deliveries moving forward. I think that a lot of people are under the belief that oh I got my Cybertruck order in early so that means I'm gonna get my Cybertruck before everybody else. No look at how they're rolling out deliveries at Giga Texas. They basically reached out to people who already had Model Ys on order within the Austin area and offered them an option to accelerate delivery by going with the standard range Model Y. Now they are slowly starting to offer that option in people outside of the city of Austin, but it reaffirms my theory that you don't have a place in line with your Cybertruck order. You're basically within a pool of people letting Tesla know that you want a Cybertruck when it's ready at some point, but they will likely start deliveries in the Austin area and then slowly expand from there. And as we've seen people that have put in Model Y orders just a couple weeks ago have an option to accelerate delivery, I think your location to the factory says a lot more about when you'll get your Cybertruck truck. Not so much when exactly you placed your order because Tesla has never prioritized chronologically when you're ordered therefore you get your car sooner. So obviously a lot of you are probably fairly disappointed with a lot of these stats on the 4680 Model Y. I mean the charging curve seems average and this also answers the question no you cannot charge your 4680 Model Y to 100% every day. I mean you could just 
know that there's probably going to be some degradation along with that but the range is not particularly amazing and it starts at sixty thousand dollars with really no sign of that price coming down anytime soon so many of you are like why did tesla make this and how come at battery day they hyped up the 4680 battery so much if it was just going to end up having worse range not really be much more efficient not really have faster charging while i do agree that tesla probably overhyped the 4680 battery i do think most people if you're asking yourself that question are missing the entire point of what battery day was while yes they said this would enable us to make cheaper vehicles and longer range in the future the primary focus of these batteries was scale being able to ramp up production faster with a smaller factory footprint so that they could deliver more cars overall that's where all of tesla's focus is right now and this is exactly why i'm trying to temper expectations with the cybertruck in a lot of my videos i keep saying expect it to be expensive because of inflation and demand is way too high elon has said in interviews they don't want to have multi-year backlogs because you're starting to lock in prices of vehicles and you have no clue what the cost of materials is going to be like in the future so i think they are going to raise the price of the cybertruck and get it to a price high enough that they don't have multi-year backlogs that they have to chew through slowly and because it seems that with these 4680 batteries they are prioritizing scale not so much high range i don't see how a much larger much heavier vehicle like the cybertruck is going to get over 400 or 500 miles of range when tesla is charging you know sixty thousand dollars for a model y with like a 65 kilowatt hour battery pack if the cybertruck is very efficient like more efficient than every other electric truck or any truck for that matter on the road it would still take a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack to just get it to 300 miles in other words two battery packs of model y's worth into the cybertruck to get 300 miles of range out of it and that's 120 grand worth of revenue right there because it's so cheap and so simple for them to stamp out these body panels and these underbody casting presses i don't think the cybertruck with its larger tires rear wheel steering exoskeleton quad motor design armored glass adaptive air suspension all of that is not going to equal less money than just all of the additional parts it requires to build a model y outside of the battery pack so that's why i'm standing by my prediction of somewhere close to a hundred thousand dollars with a little over 300 miles of range and that's going to be the only trim for many many years and you know i wish i could even say that if you wait a little bit longer maybe they'll make a long range or performance focused model y with 4680 batteries but in tesla's last shareholder deck they said that later this year they plan on introducing a 2170 model y out of giga texas which will likely be either a performance or long range it will probably be the exact same specs as the fremont made model y which is already using single piece front and rear castings basically that means that the giga texas 2170 model y will just be the same long range the same performance as fremont and from what tesla has told us so far it doesn't sound like there's any 400 mile range or super performance driven model y coming in the future so that's why i think while there's overhead for the 4680 in the future if they want to go with a more pure nickel based cathode they probably can make longer range evs but that's not the limiting factor preventing ev adoption right now tesla is prioritizing affordability of building that cell so that they can ramp the production of those cells faster and that's going to result in pretty average range you know 279 miles in the model y and with the cybertruck likely something around 300 if you understand the why behind these specs i think as disappointing as they may be you'll understand why they're doing it that way and how this actually supports their mission statement more so than hogging up battery supplies and making 400 or 500 mile range cyber trucks but those trucks would likely cost 150 180 thousand dollars and they would build a lot less of them because raw materials and cell supply is the main limiting factor right now so once again thank you to spoken reviews in the description below for covering his ownership experience and pulling the trigger on a 4680 model y so we can learn more about it over time and thank you to everyone on patreon supporting this channel directly seriously helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos so thanks again have an excellent rest of your day